What's up everyone, welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Blog, and I figured since we just in the last episode talked about the upcoming comic book of the Venom movie, the tie-in, I figure why not go ahead and review first host number two, because I know I'm a little late, I know number three came out this week, I promise I'll catch up to, uh, to you guys with that, but let's talk about number two, and uh, and this time I won't worry about spoilers, because the last time the reason I re like kind of redacted or hid the ending was because I didn't want to spoil it for you guys, uh, but since issue three is already out, hopefully you guys are buying it, so I'm going to probably talk about the ending of this comic this time, so spoilers ahead for those of you out there who uh, want to avoid them. Definitely go pick up this book though, it's really great, and for those of you who want a chance to win a copy, boom, right there, digital copy, first person to put that code in at that website gets a free copy of this digitally so enjoy that read it let me know what you think down in the comments below all right venom first host number two so let's talk about this real quick first off mark bagley cover is awesome i have the variant cover too i think i showed you guys that in a previous video but that's really great there's i think there's a couple variants for each issue but i just got the ones that are like cover price because i just can't afford all the other ones right now um but again we get the you know opening artwork same artwork which i'm like eh, but it's still a cool shot so eh, whatever it's better than just a black you know page with letters on it for me um, but then we start off right where the last issue ended where eddie brock got his butt handed to him by who i thought was lijah but i guess is not this is just a scroll warrior uh, lady who is just like here to kick a bunch of butt and might have some connections to uh, tell car and he ended the last issue ended with tell car revealing himself he hit her in the head with the sewer lid and now he's battling her to protect the symbiote so we saw him on earth now and he's battling her and again mark bagley it's so good to see him drawing venom again the guy has not lost his touch in my opinion and also to round out the lethal protector team as far as artists go ron Lim also comes in and draws a few pages in this book which is fantastic it's i'm so excited to see this our team put back together um, on this and so I think they're going to continue forward like that as well where Ron Lim will do some of the flashback stuff or some of the scenes in general um, so yeah so we have this battle going on it's great uh, uh, Eddie keeps getting his butt kicked though uh, this scroll lady just keeps taking them down like really really easily she's got to let you know her staff that she uses to shock Eddie but then he takes it away from her and he you know saves Tel Car temporarily she fights Eddie for a minute then she takes a wire, unplugs it, and uses the electricity to shock Eddie and drop him to the ground. So once again, Eddie is down for the count. Uh, poor guy just not having a lot of luck in this fight here. He's definitely overwhelmed by the sudden appearance of everything and the symbiote confused seeing Tel Car again because it recognizes him, but it doesn't remember fully how it knows him. Uh, and so I thought that was a pretty neat thing where it's like, all right, we're adding continuity. Uh, Mike Costa did a good job of explaining why the suit doesn't remember as opposed to it just being like you know conveniently not remembering uh, for the story's sake he actually comes up with a reason which i really like uh and then so we have uh you know this woman take down eddie and then she comes after tell car again she's about to kill him she's like you know what i'm just going to end this now and kill both of you and that's when eddie uh uses his webbing pulls tell car to safety up on a roof and then one of my favorite things, I love this actually, she's still holding the electric wire and Eddie grabs a water tower and pushes it over on her. And so the water rains down on her, she's holding that wire and it electrocutes her. I don't think she's dead, but it certainly put her down uh, big time. <laughs> and I love that. I was like, oh man, I always love the water tower thing. Like it seems like a very, you know, New York thing, Daredevil and Spider-Man. I've always seen artists draw them in the background. So it's cool to see it used as like a weapon in this, which uh, was really worked. I thought Mike Costa handled that really well, and I thought the art was great on it, and it added that sense of humor, that like, oh man, Eddie, all right, you came out on top, you did it. Uh, so, you know, then him and Telcar talk, and Telcar is like, I, I need to unlock the memories. You do remember me, suit, but uh, but the, the memories are suppressed, and it's because the mission we were on, I found out how to kind of manipulate you and, and suppress memories in case we were ever caught. But once I have access to you, I can unlock those memories. Uh, he's like, but first I'm gonna have to pass out. <laughs> And then he passes out. And when he wakes up, he's being operated on because he has some damage and he's bleeding and stuff. Uh, so Eddie takes him to Alchemex, where Liz and Dr. Steve are. And Liz is not happy that a, you know, Cree alien is in her lab being operated on. And she's like, look, Eddie, you can't just bring aliens here. Like, this isn't Eddie's, like, clubhouse of, you know, alien babysitting. Like, I already have your infant upstairs or downstairs or wherever it's hidden. Um, but but I, now I have a Cree warrior. Like, knock it off. Stop bringing people here and stop bringing alien life forms here. And he's like, look, this guy, he can help us. You know, we need him. Um, and he might know something. So, uh, so let's, let's at least explore it, you know, but you know, you talked about in the last issue that you wanted to use the suit and the, the baby symbiote to do things. Maybe this guy can do it without being intrusive. Maybe, you know, he could be a key to something. So she's like, all right, I'm willing to listen to the guy. So he comes in 
And again, the artwork changes. We got Ron Lim now doing it, which is good. I love his art; looks fantastic. And uh, and he has Eddie, you know, basically talking to the the Telcar guy, the Cree guy, and uh, Liz, and they're all going around. And Telcar is giving his origin, his backstory, like where he's been all these years. So after he gave up the suit, his uh, the you know, the Cree Scroll War ended, and they talk about it. Avengers eighty seven through eighty nine. Uh, they reference that, you know, they show some of the battle. Um, then they have him being outcast. Uh, Telcar gets outcast as a traitor. Uh, because of the mission he was on and everything, people would kind of label him as a, a traitor to the cause, and they outcast him. And then he's sold, actually, to the Skrulls. And they use him, and they beat him, and they torture him and everything. And then uh, after he escapes from the Skrulls, like years, years later, uh, he just starts wandering the universe. And then he hears stories of a symbiote, of an actual Space Knight. And so here we get the reference for Venom Space Knight. So it's neat. I mean, Mike Costa here is not losing any continuity by telling his story. And that's what I love most about this book is that he's not sacrificing actual story. He's not, he's not retconning stuff. He's all, he's tying it in the best he can. And I love that. I think that's uh, very awesome. And I think that's what writers should do. And they shouldn't sacrifice uh, story and they shouldn't sacrifice continuity just to tell the version they want to tell. He's trying to fit it into everything that's happened, even Space Knight, which a lot of people weren't big fans of. Uh, myself, I haven't read it yet. We're gonna on the show, but I've heard a lot of bad things about it. Um, but still, to reference it is great. And, uh, and so it shows that he's paying attention. And you don't get to choose which continuity is good or bad for your story. You, you fit it all in. It all happened. And Mike Costa is doing that here, and that's why I like this book a lot. Uh, but then Telcar says, look, I can unlock the memory, so let's do it. So he does, and, and the suit remembers everything that him and Telcar, it and Telcar, have done together. And uh, remembers uh, their whole life, like the, the whole mission they went on. Even this part here, which is the two explorers that found the, you know, the outcast suit in the first issue in the flashback, showing it give the suit to Telcar. So whoever they are, they are connected to the Kree, and they've chosen Telcar to give the suit to. So that's a cool bit of information there, visual storytelling, which I really like. If you can't, you know, if you don't say it in words, say it in visuals. It is a comic after all. And, uh, and then you get this scene <laughs> where Venom is crying because all the memories flood back in. He's remembering things of his life, or it's remembering things of his life that it didn't know before, or didn't remember before. So seeing that and having that revelation of this life it had uh, brought tears to its, you know, symbiote eyes, I guess. I, I didn't know it could cry, but maybe it, it developed that from being attached to humans all these years. Um, and then even uh, she's like, Brock, are you crying? And he's like, yeah, I'm not crying, you're crying. Uh, but then you have Telcar who's like talking to the suit, and he says, look, if you want... Come join me again. We have a mission. We can stop the, uh, you know, I want, I want to get vengeance or revenge or kind of like settle this Kree scroll thing. The war is still going on. Uh, we're still at war with each other. We still hate each other. And uh, there's still factions out there that carry on that. And I want to go stop them. And I need your help. Would you help me? And he knows the suit has to choose him willingly. And the suit says, look, we appreciate everything you've done. And we appreciate the the, the trouble you're in. But we, ch we made a choice. We like Eddie Brock. We're going to stick with him. And I love this too because it gives the suit a choice to do things too, uh, which sometimes is absent in Venom comics, where they just treat the suit as a weapon that Eddie Brock uses, and they don't really play up that there's two entities making decisions here. So it was cool to see that, and he chooses Eddie. So Telcar says, all right, you've made your choice, but that's not going to work for me. So he grabs Liz Allen, and he throws her out the window. And you're like, holy crap, he's gone crazy. So Venom jumps out the window, and he's like, no, no, no. And he webs up uh, Liz Allen, he saves her. And she's like, no, Eddie, he's not crazy. He he did this to distract you. He's going after the baby. And then she, he's like, wait, what? And so he busts back through the wall, goes back into the building. Dr. Steve is there, and he's like, help, help. And that's when Telcar rips off the cage, pulls out the baby symbiote, and he's holding it. And he says, look. I'm going to bond with something one way or another. This thing is too young to you know, know the difference of how to bond properly and everything. So I'll just take this uh, unless you bond with me. So he's bargaining with the suit. And the suit's like, Eddie, we have to do this. And Eddie's like, no, don't. Like, we can stop him. We can find a way. And he's like, no, we can't risk the baby being corrupted. We can't risk another carnage. We can't risk another scream or any of those people. Like, we need this thing to be a hero, to be a real good person the way we want to be with you. And so, you know, we got to, you know, we, uh, let me just go. Let me go and we'll figure something out later. That way we can save the child. And so the suit makes that decision and goes and rebonds with Telcar um, after Telcar does an actual new ability. Uh, that the Venom suit we didn't know had, and he unlocks it, maybe takes control of it. He's going into its essentially DNA writing and its coding, and he's uh, you know getting it to rebond with him um, and uh, unlocking all those memories at the same time. So again, a new ability that we haven't seen done before with the suit, which I think is really cool. And uh, and now Telcar has it, and he uh, absorbs it completely inside of him. It's not even outside his body; it's inside of him. 
Um, so again, I think it's a way for him to use it as a weapon, for him to be in full control, because maybe he doesn't trust the suit to allow him to do what he needs to do. So he's, you know, suppressing it by looking at its digital coding and stuff, or its DNA coding or whatever it was. And uh, and then it throws the uh, baby back to Eddie, and it leaves Eddie with the suit and uh, the, the the symbiote baby. And, uh, and he says, you know, uh, Eddie goes, don't worry, it's okay. And then the last shot is him, you know, just in his boxers, defeated, holding the suit saying, don't worry child, it's gonna be okay. But oh man, I love this book. Mike Costa is rocking it. Mark Bagley and Ron Lemonart is just fantastic. It just feels fun. Like this book is great. It adds the cosmic element that, you know, the Donny Kate stuff is trying to add, but I think not as successfully, just in my personal opinion. And again, I'm not trying to compare the two books. I'm just pointing out like the versions of things that I like versus the versions of things that I, um, that don't work for me. And in Donny Kate's version, it's a very intriguing idea. And it's one that's certainly going to get me to pick up the book for another couple issues to at least see where it goes. Uh, but it is one that is still like, ah, I don't see why. Like, I don't see the purpose of this other than, you know, trying to put Put a major stamp on something for the sake of doing it, you know, as opposed to what works for the story. And my big issue with that book is that it's not an Eddie Brock story. You could take Eddie out of that and you could put Flash in there if he was still alive, rest in peace, or you could put Matt Gargan in there and I still feel like the story doesn't change uh, at all in that book. And uh, and this one, it is Eddie Brock. It, it has to be Eddie Brock in this storyline. It has to be him to uh, that the suit is, you know, not wanting to leave. It has to be him to be the one who wants the suit and, you know, him and the suit to raise the child properly and uh, to learn from the past mistakes they've made. It has to be Eddie and that's what makes this book really great and both of them are making decisions that affect the story and move it forward in new directions so 100% I am on board with this book it is my favorite Venom book out right now and I hope you guys check it out for yourself and read it for yourself and I want to hear what you think if you agree with me do you think this is a better book do you not care do you just like that you have two great Venom books because if that's the case that's awesome too I'm totally a fan of that uh, mentality as well uh, but for me the, the Donny Kate stuff I need I need a little bit more time to adjust to it but that's okay because I needed the same thing with Mike Costa when he started. It took me a while to get into his writing and now I love it. So I'm pretty sure that Donny Cates will probably turn me around very soon. But let me know what you think of Venom First Host down below. Did you read it yourself? Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.